Okay, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, <coughs> it's uh, let's see, October 14th, 2018. It is almost 10 p.m. I'm not sure what the temperature outside is, but it's, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, by the way. I'm not sure what the uh, temperature is, but it's supposed to be 42 in the morning. Let's see. Echo, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 61 degrees. Tonight, expect the low of 42 degrees. Okay. Uh, the reason for this video is, one, I uh, made a video earlier today. My telephone situation, I hooked back up the uh, voice over IP box and uh, plugged it in and within five minutes I had it set up and working for um, that new um, Google number that I got. It was really easy and that's going to cost me zero. I mean, I paid for the box, but of course I paid out <laughs> last week about $60 trying to get this to work, but um, get one of these voice over IP boxes, get yourself a free Google and uh, number, and you can have, if you have internet service, you can have free telephone service. Um, got a comment about the video that I made uh, and um, the comment as you can see on the screen is uh, Jim you really need to fix the sound quality of your videos the sound is really is usually really low and one has to max up the sound to get a decent sound even when there is a, a little above a hearable level not sure what it's, what's happened to your video since it seems that you are using a headset with a very close mouth and microphone to your mouth. It is either the issue with the headset or you need to crank up your sound input level on your computer. I'm going to conduct a test with this headset and with others all in this video and uh, We'll see what we find out. First of all, um, let me go to uh, sound using Windows 10. Uh, this is the output here. Down here we can see, okay, the microphone is a USB audio device. Now, I'm not sure if I can get by with, but I really don't want to use the mic, these other microphones. Not because uh, I've tried those in the past. They don't work out that great. Although maybe they'll be better than what I'm using, but here we can see. I'm not sure how, but let me see if I can um, Let me see if I can go to the software that I'm using and no, while I'm recording it is not going to allow me to do that. So I'm going to stop recording, go in here and crank this up with this uh, screen capture software that I'm using and I'm going to crank it up there to the maximum amount. So don't touch your mouse. I'll be right back. Well, um, using the pause does not work. So I'm going to have to actually stop the software and restart. Then I'll have to splice these together. But we're going to do it anyway. Don't touch the mouse. Okay, I'm back. Ooh, I think this makes a difference. Look at the... What I did is, you know, that makes a big difference. I cranked up the uh, volume with this software. 
So I'm not sure do I want to do any more because I think this is enough. Maybe I should just upload this. Wish I could show you. I can't. Um, well, there's a setting, but I already, that's too late where I can show you the, uh, but I've got it cranked to 100%. And it looks like the response is good enough, but I guess let me do let me do this. Let me upload this and get some input from you guys. And if um, if this is still not enough audio, um, then we'll just test the rest of the headsets that I have. Or we can go through, which we've sort of done actually over the years, uh, me hooking up different audio equipment and uh, different microphones. I have um, the Blue Yeti, which is a nice microphone, but I have to you have to have it right in your mouth. And I have some other microphones and. Let me upload that. Well, since I've got you here, let's see what's going on. Maybe you can hear me well. Um, up here in the left corner, you can see what software I'm using. I've paid for the video suite, and then I also paid separately, which at the in the past for the uh, screen capture program. But that's part of the video suite. They upload, or they, uh, once a year or twice a year, uh, they want like $40 or whatever, or 50 to, uh, well, probably 40 for an improvement. And I don't know how long I've been paying for improvements. There's supposedly a new improvement out now, and do I want to upgrade for $40 or whatever? Um, but... Um, anywhere the anywhere oh, the uh, video that was uploaded uh, earlier today has received 47 views, five thumbs up, and uh, okay. I don't think I saw this. Uh, comment. I didn't pay, I didn't see this comment that was, uh, let's see, I even read it totally, although I scanned it to hear just now. Better be, I better read slow, right? So, in case. Also, a feedback on your videos, which is actually a positive one. The reason people like your videos is that you maintain a conversational pace, which is either new, which is neither too fast or too slow. I don't like videos done by those kids with a loud and excited voice that runs my experience with a simple review video. In fact, when I hear someone too excited over a product, I usually automatically assume that they have lost their objectivity about the product and that they're going to exaggerate even the simplest. Ooh, long comment. Even the simplest and common features of it. Another feedback is that even though you mentioned that you don't really like to show much of yourself in your videos, either you think you are old or something which I particularly don't care, I know that our today's society lost its respect to its experienced elders, but keeping your camera window on the split screen too small makes it harder to see the products you review in your hands. Good point. The screen is possibly bigger and you see your side of the screen bigger, hence, but watching your videos with a laptop screen is really hard, let alone watching it on a mobile phone or a tablet. Another good point. Uh, see, I don't watch, I really don't watch stuff on my cell phone. I mean, you know, I just don't watch. So, very good point. Something I did not think about. 
back when I wrote the uh, BBS, back in 1982 when I was doing my BBS, something that I repeatedly forgot about was people who were visually impaired. And I had several people who were callers into the BBS who were blind. And I was always making, well, like now, I'm, I, I was always making changes to the menus and stuff like that. And uh, I remember one guy especially would, okay, Jim, when you did such, you know, and I would really forget about those, the people with the, with the uh, vision impairment when I was doing things, so... And I really hadn't thought of, where was I? I hadn't thought about some of the points you're making. Uh, just assuming everybody's looking at it on a, well, I know, of course, from statistics that YouTube gives. And I forget what it is. I could look it up here and put it on the screen for you. But a large, large number of you watch these videos and all the other videos uh, on mobile devices. So that's something I need to get into my my head. Uh, let's see. But keeping your camera window open on that split screen too small makes it harder to see the products you review in your hands. The screen is possibly bigger and you see your side of the screen bigger but watching your videos from a laptop screen is really hard let alone if it's on a mobile phone or a tablet. The final suggestion is that I'd like to see a video talking about your experience in your life and what you have done differently if you had a chance and so on. I think people need to hear more about older people's experiences to learn and get better in life. Thanks and keep up the good work. You know, those are exactly the kind of videos I sometimes throw in that in, but I've got a bunch of videos here, what, a th almost a thousand videos. So it's inside of other little videos I ramble off into something. Uh, but actually those are the type of, that's the type I like, stuff I kind of like to talk about. And um, so I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to, I wish the, um, and I don't want to create another YouTube channel. Uh, I want to keep things simple. But, and I wish the, um, um, what have they got covered up with, move us down here. Can't move it down, this is in the way. Oh. That sucks. I'll figure it out. There. It was I didn't see it, but it was oh God. I'd like to reach up and I have a bright, bright light up here. I'd like to turn it off, but I don't have pants on. Uh so I can't stand up. Um I wish the playlist, I would like to, I wish that YouTube would make the playlist so that when I make a video, when, well, when, anybody, when anybody makes a video and then you put it into a playlist, I would like to have a playlist that you really had to go to, you know, not I don't want those videos that are in the playlist to also show up just in the general things. So I would like to have a playlist that is, you know, old farts talking to young whippersnappers, and you'd have to go in there in order to see them, the videos. But um, things happen occasionally. Or I'm watching a TV show or a movie or trying to go to sleep or something and I think about stuff from the old days or whatever and I think I should I'd like to make a video and tell people about 
about that and give examples. And so that's, you know, something from uh, my past life. Uh, and I could give a bunch of examples of one of them I was just thinking about the other day for some reason. I worked with a lot of people. I worked for a lot of people. And I worked with a lot of people who were a lot smarter than I was. But they would do the, the dumbest things because they wouldn't listen. They, they knew they were smarter. They weren't as smart as they, none of them were as smart as they thought they were. But they knew they were smart and they knew they had, you know, abilities and talents and all that type of stuff. So you would say something to them and they would say no and ignore it. And then it would turn out. They were wrong, big time. And so that's something I'd like to talk about and use some examples. Because like there was one young guy that I worked with in my in Florida. And he was a supervisor. He just hired in. I, well, I just I hadn't worked there either any length of time. When I got hired in like the first day or two, the... Uh, female supervisor said, Jim, I saw your, you know, thing and I want you to be, when I'm not on duty here, when I'm not working, you'll be working and you'll be, and I was just hired in, you know. And I said, I have no desire to be supervisor, of, you know. Uh, but um, anyway, so there was, then I ended up, I think, on the second shift, I believe. Can't remember exactly. And they hired in this young guy and he was uh, smart. But, he just repeatedly did things. And then he was, um, he enlisted in the army. And so I said, uh, let me tell you something. And I wasn't in the military, by the way. I, I tried to get in the military. I couldn't. Uh, but I, I tried to tell him, you know, okay, you know, you're a smart guy. You know you're a smart guy. But if you go in the military, you, you listen to, you know, listen to the other people. S stop and think and listen to the other people. He, 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 it was, he sort of, like, he just gave me this look like, oh, you know, you what do you know? You're so stupid, you know. And I, he didn't know if I'd been in the military or not. He didn't know anything about me. But uh, I wonder, I, you know, he... I forget the, the branch, the, the thing that they signed him up for. That doesn't mean he's necessarily going to get it. But being smart, you know, he might have got it. And it was, I'm not sure it was intelligence, but it was something where he thought that he would not end up, was it the army he went into? Um, but he thought he wasn't going to end up in combat, I think. Anyway, well, he said it more or less. Well, I, I, you know. I said, no, they'll find a reason to send your ass, you know, a liaison or uh, something. And and uh, I said, if so, you know, listen to the people, listen to, the, you know, the, the other people. But just in the short time I worked with him, I saw him and he actually put me in danger several times because of the, the decisions he was making things he was doing. So anyway, I would like to talk about people, you know, listen to the other people. I always did. For some reason, I was, uh, one hospital I worked at, I ended up being second shift supervisor for years, and I went back to the day shift not as a supervisor. I didn't want to be a supervisor, never wanted to be a supervisor. And then I went to, um, or then I was on day shift, and I eventually became supervisor on the day shift. Then the lieutenant, who was over all three shifts, a couple times he had heart attacks. Once he was out for three months, so I was acting over all three shifts and what have you. And Now I forgot the point that I was going to make, which I wanted to make. Uh, um, 
Well, forgot I had a point I wanted to make about the subject that I was talking about, about being, oh, I know what it was now. So when I was at the hospital a couple times, they had courses that they gave to the employees there. And I think in every case it was, I was in the a supervisor's training class and all the rest were nursing supervisors and I was the only one from some other department that was in there. And uh, let's see, motivational dynamics, uh, participatory management, those are two different courses that I took and that other people, and I can't remember which, but we, when we had a break, we stepped outside the meeting room and the cafeteria was there and you could, you know, take a break out there and have a Coke or a coffee or a tea or whatever. So all the nurses are sitting around there and, and uh, they're all saying, wow, I, I'm just learning so much and I, I didn't know that. And I, that's what I'm going to be doing and everything. And that entire course, of course, I wasn't about to have to look like an idiot if I had said, I'm not learning anything. I know all this stuff. That's all common sense. And that'd be the way that anybody should do it. And I was just sitting there so listening to what they were saying of, about all that. And they were all, they had bachelor's degrees. I think every one of them probably had a, at least a bachelor's degree in nursing. And it was things like, uh, you know, listen to your people, keep them informed. Uh, you know, don't order them to do something unless you have to. Don't order them to do something you you can do it by, what do you think about this? And then you get, you know, they think it's their idea. And all, all this stuff that we were given, given out of the books and stuff, I really didn't learn anything because that was the way I operated. And uh, so, okay, let's, I'm going to upload this. And I hope the audio is okay. And I'm going to try, uh, like the blind man, <laughs> remind me if if you can. When I uh, don't make the picture big enough, especially when you're talking about I and I thought about that. I did think about that a little bit the other day. Well, this isn't the uh, voice over IP device, but if you remember the video right before this, I uh, that was a different camera. I, you know, I held it up, but, it, well, I wasn't on, uh, and uh, I was thinking, you know, that might not be as, and so exactly. So then, I, of course, I totally forgot it. That's one of my ham radios, dual band FM. Okay, we're going to test this out, and I'm going to, too, I brag about the fact that I don't have any notes, any script or outline or whatever, but I do have this computer over here, and I should put your ideas and your points on there and maybe something else or two and stick it on there. Maybe I can look over. And But I've noticed when I'm making these videos, it's like I have tunnel vision, and because there'll be, then when the thing's over, I'll think, oh, wait a minute, I wanted to show this, or I wanted to do this, or do that. So I sort of get tunnel vision, I think. But, okay, let's find out, let's hope this video is okay, because this headset is okay. But I have a bunch of headsets, a whole bunch. And I also have several different uh, audio boxes. So have, if I can just find the right one, I thought this was the right one, and it may still be. It may be that having the thing set at 70%, which I think is about where it was before, was just not enough. Um, needed to kick it up to 100%. Why didn't I do that anyway? I guess I didn't want to over-modulate, but I don't think... With this setup I'm using here, I don't have like the boxes that you, you may have seen in other videos, a red light, LED flashes if I over-modulated or something. Anyway, thank you very much. Every, I thank everybody for comments. 
I don't get enough. I get a lot of comments. Well, not a lot. But I uh, I would welcome, you know, questions. Well, not tactical questions. <laughs> I'm not that good at that. I'd welcome, if you have a question about um, something, um, I'm old and I've been around for a while. <clears throat> I remember before there was television. I, of course, remember before cell phones, before uh, the World Wide Web, before the Internet. Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't think I've ever mentioned it before. Maybe I, I've made so many videos. Maybe I mentioned it briefly or something. Uh, no matter where you are, um, uh, in no matter what city or town or probably, you know, city, town, or village, you probably have a sister city, you know, say you're in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, you have a sister city in some other foreign country. And in a foreign country, of course, that city over there that you both have picked, your sister city is you share things together, you maybe send delegations back and forth, and uh, maybe you have in your city hall, I don't know what Kansas City sister city is, but in uh, Hong Kong or something, that you, inside their city hall, if Kansas City was there, you know, there would probably be a display set up in our sister city and showing stuff and whatever. So um, all over the world, there are sister cities, and that's set up by the People to People organization. Uh, I was one of the founders of the People to People organization in Kansas City, Missouri. President Eisenhower made a statement or a speech one time about there should be people-to-people uh, -people contacts or whatever. And I was a teenager in high school or whatever, maybe slightly out of Anyway, he made the speech. And then uh, you've probably heard of, if you're in the United States, Hallmark Cards. Its headquarters is in Kansas City, Missouri. Joyce Hall uh, was the... Uh, president of Hallmark Cards, a Republican, and uh, he contacted President Eisenhower and said, hey, I'd like to set up a people-to-people -people organization, and I gave his approval, and so then, and I don't know what, you know, uh, Joyce Hall did not call me up on the telephone, you know, uh, a kid in his early teens or late teens or whatever, and asked me to be on the board of directors. I don't know who did call me, his secretary, or if he set up somebody special, but I ended up being one of the people selected to be on the board of directors because I was doing stuff, uh, World Friendship through shortwave radio, uh, working with setting up pen pal organizations, uh, swapping QSL cards around the world, um... Uh, doing all types of things like that. It was That was my little niche. So I was invited, divided, divided. I was invited to be on the board of directors. I went down to, on the the date, to uh, Mulebach Hotel and signed the uh, corporation papers or whatever. So now I didn't have to do anything after that. And then I think it was not long after that that they decided that they had made a mistake in the incorporation or whatever, because I don't remember, it's been so long ago, the 70s, uh, 60s, it would have probably been in the 60s, um, that they were redoing it. And so I don't think, I don't think I was on the board of directors anymore. They were redoing the thing because they'd, They'd probably set it up some way where the board of directors actually had to have some type of <laughs> input, or you know, they'd probably set it up some way where Joyce Hall or, the, or whoever he appointed could do everything without having to worry. You know, I don't know the history of the uh, 
don't know what happened, but just an interesting point, I think, that a, I wasn't poor, but that I showed up with all these executives and political people and signed the uh, charter for the People to People organization. Okay, let's stop this and check this audio. Cross your fingers. I'm still here, but I'm pressing the stop button.